All right, let me slowly start the presentation. Um, so um, this is a work that uh, we've done about strain engineering uh, on this uh, topological type 2 direct sand metal, which is nicodipolarite. Um, you can also check our preprint here. Uh, and if you are interested, you can also take a look at, at the code, the data we use it to, to produce this paper. Uh, in this another link. So uh, before I even start, let me mention about the people involved. Uh, so most of the, uh, we, we basically done a, a lot of DFT calculations and, and who conducted most of them was Pedro, also Thiago. Um, we also had some input from experimentalists that gave us some idea on how to, to statically control the, the the electronic structure of the system, which was Lucas and Jefferson, and Gabriele and Andres Elen was, are also theorists that were involved with, uh, well, helping implementing the, uh, the effective model and the and the FT calculations. Uh, so uh, since I'm not really sure if everyone here is familiar with uh, the racks and metals and things like that, let me also give a, a, a brief introduction. So um, maybe the, the, the simplest uh, material uh, we can think of with uh, a uh, Dirac dispersion is graphene. So here I show you uh, the tight binding electronic structure of graphene. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is mainly constituted by, well, only constituted by PZ orbitals, uh, what you're looking at here. And um, you see that uh, right at the Fermi level, the, the conductance and balance band uh, touch at uh, different points uh, in the Brillouin zone. Those uh, two points are non-equivalent and they are called uh, the two valleys of graphene. And uh, if you take a, a low energy uh, approximation, you find out that the, this dispersion is nearly, uh, well, it is actually linear. Uh, and this is just like a, a Dirac Hamiltonian for, for electrons with no mass. So um, when we are talking about Dirac uh, systems, uh, materials, we are actually talking about systems for which the, the, the effective Hamiltonian uh, has a linear dispersion uh, for low energies, uh, or at least near the points where the, 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 the two bands, uh, some of, uh, if, uh, any two bands cross. So, um, we can also extend this uh, idea for uh, three-dimensional systems. So, for example, uh, uh, here I, uh, I plot uh, four different situations for, for, for systems with two bands. So the first one you are looking at here uh, in the top left is uh, what we usually have for, for semiconductors. So you basically have a, a, a valence band in blue and a conduction band in red and they don't touch. There is a, a finite uh, energy gap here that separates them. Uh, but in some systems, uh, we don't have a, a, a finite gap separating those bands and they might even cross uh, and overlap. So uh, in the very uh, region where they overlap, we have this nodal line that is highlighted here in black. Um, and then uh, there are if we also add spin art coupling in those systems, uh, we can uh, avoid the, those uh, crossings at the nodal line. And then we have two options. So uh, one option is that the system uh, with spin art coupling is fully gapped and then it's, uh, well, it's fully gapped in the book. And that's what we call a, topo a topological insulator. But uh, maybe uh, the, the spin art coupling is not enough for you to, to, to fully gap the, the, the bulk of the system. Maybe in the high symmetry uh, lines of the Brillouin zone, you can, uh, the, the gap uh, does not open. And you have these uh, two points uh, where you also have this uh, nearly linear dispersion. So that's what we call Dirac or Biosome metal. And that uh, the distinction between them is basically about chirality. I, I won't enter much details here. Uh, I just want to highlight that this is basically what we are looking at when, when I'm discussing about the system. So we can also uh, talk uh, the same way we 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 name two different valleys for graphene. We also have two two sort of different valleys here for for these direct materials. 
And the, the rare point where they touch uh, is what we call uh, direct or bio nodes. Um, but uh, when we uh, when we are talking about condensing matter, uh, well, so if if we uh, all, all these um, classification and names that we give is uh, related with high energy stuff so far. So uh, the rack and bio uh, and even Majorana are uh, are names that come from from specific representations of the Dirac equation with uh, specific, very specific uh, characteristics. And uh, in high energy physics, we also have uh, Lorentz invariance. Uh, and then uh, every single cone must uh, must look like that. So the dispersion is also uh, is always uh, sy uh, symmetric uh, around some uh, point where where the uh, well, when we're talking about high energy physics, not conduction and, and, and valence bands, but uh, uh, you can see this sort of symmetry. Uh, uh, but in condensed matter, uh, the cones not necessarily look as nice as this one. They, they can have some tilt and, and this uh, in high energy physics cannot exist because that would violate Lorentz invariance. Uh, but uh, in condensed matter, then we, we as uh, uh, since we are really creative, we named them type two uh, Dirac or biomaterials. So uh, when I'm talking about type two uh, Dirac and methods, I'm just talking about the Dirac and method that he has this uh, tilted column. Um, so oh, sorry, the, the title here is is not right. Um, so let me talk a, a, a bit about uh, nicodiethylamide. Uh, this is a transition method, nicodiethylamide. Uh, with uh, nico uh, atoms between uh, between sandwich of, uh, between two tellurium uh, layers, uh, and, the, and every single layer uh, that you see here is linked with each other with van der Waals interactions. Uh, I also plot here the, the, the brillant zone of the system with uh, some high symmetry points highlighted. Uh, every single electronic structure uh, uh, result that I'll show you from the FT was actually performed uh, on this uh, red path here. Uh, and you see uh, that I, I also highlighted another path here. And, and the important point here is this D point between the, the gamma and the A point. This D point is exactly where the, the, the Iraq node is located. So uh, the, the point, the cone is located along this gamma A line, of course, there is, a, 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 it comes in pairs. So there is also a, a, another point uh, with a Dirac node for a negative uh, KZ momentum here. Uh, so before, uh, before I even uh, start uh, talking about the results itself, let me, uh, me uh, try to, to, to to tell a couple of things for people who are interested on DFT. So uh, all those calculations were carried on, on Quantum Espresso, which is a DFT software uh, that uh, implements pseudo potential plus plane waves. Uh, we use a PBE uh, exchange correlation functions plus spin arc coupling. And those are the convergence criteria that we choose. Um, also, uh, since we are talking about strain, uh, strain engineering, uh, we we also tested several different uh, exchange correlation functions, and uh, of course, each one of them will give slightly different results. Um, so we we basically test like very uh, familiar ones that uh, everyone uses, but also we tested some uh, van der Waals functions, functionals, and. Uh, we see that uh, indeed the, the van der Waals functions uh, uh, actually have a, a, a better values if you compare it with uh, experiment uh, and also with other previous calculations. But uh, since uh, Quantum Express has no implementation for spin arc coupling with those functions, we, we could not actually uh, carry the calculations using uh, any van der Waals. Uh, Exchange correlation functions. So we use it just PBE plus spinar coupling. Um, but but for the for the elastic properties, we actually use some of them to to just make sure that the, the PBA PBE results were not so far from from the from the ones with uh, Van der Waals uh, approximations. 
So uh, now let me show you the, the electronic band structure of this system. And uh, so our results will, will be focused mainly along this gamma A line that I, I just discussed with you. You can see that there is a, a, a crossing here and this crossing is exactly the direct cone. You see this cone is indeed tilted as, as a type two direct cone uh, should be. So uh, this direct cone is around 0.15 uh, electron volt. This is uh, much closer to the Fermi energy than other uh, systems on this family. So for example, platinum and palladium dichloride uh, also present this direct cone, but it is uh, far away from the Fermi level. So uh, this method is quite interesting, interesting since uh, we actually have a direct cone uh, close to the, to the Fermi energy. Um, the the main orbital character uh, of these diracons is the tellurium B orbitals. So uh, basically, if we, uh, when we when I'll discuss the the effective model with you, uh, I'll focus uh, on a construction that may uh, only takes the the tellurium B orbitals. Um, uh, I also said that this uh, topological type two diracon matter. So let me explain that. Uh, the, the, the direct cons right here, but uh, if we take a look at the, the reducible representations, I can actually see something interesting happening. So uh, yeah, if we start at the gamma point, you see uh, that we have uh, this point with positive parity and the other one with negative parity is around here. But as we go, uh, as we travel from gamma to, to the A point, we actually see the, the, the parity is switched. So we actually have negative parrot here and positive parrot here, and this is an avoid cross it. Uh, so uh, there is some uh, topological structure here. Um, I'm not entirely sure how that manifests uh, for the Dirac physics itself, but indeed the, this band has uh, some something that might be interesting to take a look. Uh, so let me now explain you how we constructed an effective model for the system. So uh, the, the idea was basically uh, taking the, the, the discrete symmetries that the system possesses. Uh, so it's basically time reversal symmetry since we have no term that is breaking it. Uh, inversion, C3 rotations and mirror symmetry. And then we, we, we get a, a general Hamiltonian which we can fit uh, uh, with the DFT data that, that we have. And that's uh, what you see here, the, 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 the dispersion of the tilted cone uh, around, uh, yeah, around the Dirac node. So um, let, let me now move on to, to the, part, the part where you actually discuss uh, strain engineering. Um, uh, for that, may, uh, let me uh, just uh, try to give you an example, uh, just to motivate why uh, we believe that strain, uh, strain in the system can also uh, can uh, indeed be a, a good way to, to tune the electronic properties of the system. So if we consider, for example, graphene, uh, in graphene, we have a C3 rotation. So without strain, we have all those hoppings uh, equal to each other. But as we strain the system, we can change those three hoppings, and uh, and it's well known that then uh, we, if we go to the low energy approximation, uh, we have not only the direct dispersion but also this extra term, which is a, a, a gauge field, uh, and this is of course related with the how the hopping constants change. So we uh, we're asking how. Uh, how the, the, the electronic properties of nicodifluoride will change as we apply strain. And uh, of course, there are some other works where people will study uh, strain in direct 3D materials, but uh, not type two as far as I know. And the first question uh, we, we of course wanna answer is that, can we actually strain this material? Because if, uh, there's no way uh, if the material is too fragile. Uh, there's no way to. Uh, there's no reason to even start thinking about uh, strain engineering. And uh, yeah, with the FT calculations, we could uh, compute bo both the bulk and shear modules. And the ratio between them, when it's larger than 1.75, actually indicates a ductile behavior. 
so indeed we can uh, we can consider strain engineering this material. Uh, so uh, we performed several calculations with different strain states from going from uh, compressive strain to tensile strain from minus five percent to five percent, and and basically three different states. So uh, strain only uh, along the z direction, then uh, in plane strain and, and also. Uh, is a static pressure. And so uh, before I, 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 I continue, let me just point something else here. Uh, the, the direct cones are, uh, as we learned, are protected uh, by C3 uh, rotations. So uh, a nice way we had to, to show that was uh, applying a, 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 an axial strain and uh, along, for example, the x direction, and then we break uh, C3 symmetry, and we can actually see a, a, a band gap uh, right here. Of course, this is a weird gap because the cone is, uh, is really tilted, but uh, the, the, the crossing is not happening anymore. Um, and so what happens then when we apply strain in the system, we can actually tune both the, the energy where the, the, the rack node is located, as well as its momentum uh, along uh, the Brillouin zone. Of course, the, the momentum is always uh, at the case at uh, kx, ky equals zero, so uh, along the gamma i line, gamma a line. Uh, and you, you can see that as we strain the system, we can, for example, uh, try to, to, to bring the, the Dirac on to the Fermi energy, which might be interesting if we if we're doing transport or anything like that. So you can also see that in the band diagram right here, uh, the, the cone much closer to the, the Fermi energy. Uh, Sorry, yeah. may I ask a question here? Sure. Uh, so uh, it seems that the wild point is exclusively made out of tellurium orbitals. Yes. Uh, isn't that a, a bit unexpected? Like I thought for topology, you need some kind of band inversion and you need to mix two different orbitals or something like this. Yeah, uh, so uh, that is indeed uh, the, this class of, of, mat of direct materials. They are uh, quite different in this sense. They are not formed of two different uh, um, types of orbitals. The, 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 the different thing here is their uh, angular momentum only. So we we do have some uh, some uh, the two bands uh, do have some different uh, uh, sort of character, but they uh, it's not like the the very orbit of the system. Um, yeah, and, and the topology itself. Uh, then uh, when we we look at uh, the avoided crossings here, we actually see that there is uh, quite uh, quite strong uh, nickel uh, contributions here. So. Uh, in this avoided crossing, we do have uh, 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 two different orbitals crossing, but the direct point, point itself is indeed some very, something very specific for this class of materials. Uh, they are constituted basically by, by, the, uh, by the P orbitals of the uh, uh, Calcogen Um Right, so... Um, we see that with different strain states, we can get all sorts of different behaviors. And um, so uh, one thing we, we should ask is, for example, can we uh, try to, to at least predict something? And then we extended our effective model to actually include the effects of strain. So the first step we, we've done here is, uh, well, we had two, two possible routes. One of them would be constructing the full type binding model that can actually reproduce the all the bands of the system, but since we are focused only on the, the on this low uh, low energy model uh, to to maybe get rid of the Nyko bands, for example, uh, another uh, way we can do the uh, apply strain in the system is by first uh, doing lattice regularization. So it's basically a, a modification like that in the Hamiltonian that will. Uh, when we take the low energy uh, uh, or the KP expansion, we go back to, to what we had before. Uh, and, and then we can uh, head strain the system, uh, considering that uh, 
we we had first a polynomial of uh, momentum and and then we we basically adjust those uh, uh, parameters to 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 include the strain effects and uh, with that we can uh, we can obtain a, a, an effective Hamiltonian that includes uh, strain uh, different types of strain. And also something interesting is that we can actually predict uh, how the, the, the cone and, and the direct node uh, are shifted. Well, of course, not predict because we have to uh, define those parameters and all of them are fitted using DFT. But then we actually have uh, expressions to 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 uh, explain or to predict how, how the cone will be tuned as we uh, apply string. Uh, and uh, let me also make another comment that uh, which is beyond the direct uh, physics uh, in the system. So uh, we can look, for example, uh, how all the irreducible representations uh, change as we apply a string. And there is something interesting going on here. Uh, we we have some uh, some crossings uh, that is happening uh, around here between the, those uh, two band representations. Uh, uh, since uh, well, with symmetry arguments, you can actually argue that uh, from uh, with negative strain here, we can always have a, a we also have a type one Dirac cone farming. Uh, this is a bit far away from the firm level, but uh, might be interesting to study the, the coexistence of type one and type two Dirac cones uh, in a single material. Uh, well, uh, so far I, I discussed with you that. Um, you, you could, uh, we can dynamically control uh, the electronic properties with strain. Uh, but for experiments that might be a bit hard, maybe you, uh, if you're an experimentalist, you, you don't actually have a, a way to dynamically control the system. So another idea that came uh, was to inter, uh, intercalate the, the Van der Waals layers with uh, alkali metals. And and, and then we, we perform a bunch of calculations. So let me try to explain you. So, so uh, uh, we did some, uh, several uh, supercell calculations that uh, actually showed uh, the, the, the lattice constant uh, changing as we intercalate the system with alkali metals. Uh, you can see here that both A and C are, are growing as uh, the, 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 the fraction of lithium uh, increases. And well, you, you might be also asking, uh, uh, yeah, okay, that, that sounds good, but uh, maybe as you introduce lithium in the system, that, that, uh, that uh, there's probably a huge contribution of lithium near the Fermi level, and that, but we check that that's not true. There is, of course, some contribution, but even for 100% of uh, lithium between those layers, so this calculation here is for a single cell with 100% of, uh, of lithium. We basically have no contribution at all. So uh, we uh, our calculation suggests that uh, the the direct cone physics is not uh, strongly changed by the by the introduction of lithium. The direct cone is, is still there, and uh, there is a, a nice way then to 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 con is do a strain engineering without dynamical control, but a static control instead. Uh, if we look uh, at, at the, the, uh, this very specific path, we can actually see, for example, that the, uh, as we introduce lithium, uh, the, the direct cone uh, actually crosses the, uh, the Fermi level at some point. So this is done for uh, calculations with a full fraction of lithium here. Intermediate stuff uh, will probably have a, a, a situation where the, the cone uh, is much closer to the, the uh, to the Fermi energy. Uh, something that's also quite interesting here is that we are increasing this uh, lattice constant C. And, and there's uh, several papers in the literature saying that uh, uh, where uh, where people uh, make uh, nicodethylride become the superconductor with uh, uh, intercalation with uh, materials. And, and they argue that uh, the, the Main mechanism that drives to uh, the uh, that yeah that drives the superconducting transition is the increasing of the spacing between the layers. So that might also be a road not only to control the the, the direct cone to to lie closer to to the Fermi energy, but also 
to, to induce superconductivity. Uh, you also see that we have a, a nearly flat band here uh, as we introduce lithium in the system. So that might also be something interesting for, for correlations. Uh, well, there there's a bunch of things, uh, open room here for, for experimentalists and theory people to, to actually investigate closer. So uh, in summary, uh, we showed that nicodifluoride has a ductile behavior, so we can indeed do strain engineering. Uh, there's a gap opening when C3 symmetry is broken, suggesting that the direct cone is protected by C3 symmetry. Uh, we can bring the direct cone uh, to the Fermi energy uh, with uh, external strain. We can actually do more than that and control uh, the direct cone energy uh, in several ways and also the direct cone momentum. Uh, the, uh, we also show that the dynamical control is not necessary. Can instead just prepare uh, one can start instead just prepare samples uh, where you intercalate uh, the Van der Waals layers with alkaline atoms. Uh, and combining symmetry arguments with DFT, we are, uh, we actually provided a, a strain-dependent effect of Hamiltonian, so people might also be interested to take a look and understand how uh, type two direct systems uh, are, are uh, uh, respond to strain. Uh, as I said, uh, as we intercalate with alkali metals, other than if we just apply strain along the, the, the z direction, there is room uh, for, for superconductivity. Uh, and uh, we also show that there's a coexistence between type one and type two direct cones that we still are not sure uh, what's the, uh, the interest on that, but might be something good to take a look at. That's it. I hope you like it and uh, please ask anything you want. Um, thanks for your presentation. So uh, I have a, uh, a question about the signatures. So, so what would you say is the best way to? So there is of course spectroscopy, which is which has been used as the traditional way of probing this physics. But uh, uh, does the layered nature of the material somehow help to detect the Dirac cone, or is there is there how, how does one identify a type two wild, uh, wild point or type two Dirac point? Yeah, so uh, that's something we're not entirely sure. One may, one possible way maybe is using uh, transport measurements with, uh, uh, to, to, to check chiro anomaly or something like that. We are not entirely sure uh, how that works for a type two system as, uh, uh, so far uh, as a, at least as far as I know, there, is on, there are only uh, works con considering uh, strain on type one material. So I'm not really sure the tilt, uh, how the tilt uh, behaves on, on, on transport. Uh, but yeah, that, that might be uh, also uh, an interesting way. Um, besides that, I, I don't see much uh, 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 only ARPAs and things like that. 